glorious morning and I love it. Hello everyone and welcome to a new space, a new video. I am so excited but more on this later. I'm still putting some finishing touches on that. Now this year because of the circumstances I figured that we were all gonna be kind of like indoors or maybe if we went out we would go out with masks not in a big group maybe somewhere outdoors. I feel like it's less about the costume and more about the mask and the freedom that the mask gives to make a really amazing costume. So which is why today I've designed three masks that I would personally love to wear and that kind of go with some pieces in my closet. And a quick disclaimer because this is the internet. I am not making any health claims. These are strictly just for fashion. I will be using cotton, but you can add a filter. You can put the mask on top of a medical grade mask. You be the judge. All right, let's get into it. I've gathered up my fabric, so now let's start stitching. Oh wait, we need some elastic. Elastic scraps. So this is the pattern that I've been using since the shit hit the fan. Um, I'll be using the medium size because it's perfect for my long face. Isn't this just the most Halloween fabric you have ever seen? Sequin everywhere. Where's my dirt devil? And I have a lot of muslin, so that's what I'm going to be using for the inside of these masks. So to fill you in on all my chopping, this is the pattern that I'm using, but as you can see, it does not include seam allowance. So depending on how I'm gonna stitch up these masks, some will have seam allowance and some will not. Some will have them in some places and not in others. Ooh. So after trimming them up, this is how they look. These two will go together, and then these are the ones I'm still thinking about. <laughs> and that's how you can get a more personalized fit with an original pattern. Because you know, everyone's face shape is different. For the inside, I'm just gonna flatten up the seams and then stitch a zigzag across. I'm only doing this because I'm not putting a second layer in here. Oh my goodness, the second pass came out way better. Now I'm gonna layer this on top like so. It's all pinned up and we're just gonna stitch all around the edges uh, with a zigzag. Wow, this brings back memories. This is the same trim I used when I used to go raving. But I've held on to it because I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to use this for? And now we can use it for this mask. I think it's gonna make an amazing spider web detail, like a glam spider web. Mm -hmm. Make your glue gun. Make a strip of glue. I'm gonna leave a little extra because I think that might give it a little something, but I'm not sure yet. It is nighttime, but we are still here. My headband is gone and my bangs have started roaming free. I just really want to finish this today because we are so close. Look at how good it looks. I love it, I love it. <sighs> We're finished, yay. Do I look like a member of KISS? Cause I'm kind of feeling that. All right, 
right, now that we've got the lining and the outer fabric for Beetlejuice, to stitch them up, you wanna do right sides together like this. And since we're doing a trim on the outside, you just wanna stitch closed right here and right here. Once you turn it inside out, and there you go. Nice. So the science here is that because it's cut on the bias, which means a diagonal on the fabric, you should be able to use the power of heat to curve this thing. Okay, I think I've got it to a pretty good point. I will be just stitching down along here, just like a nice top stitch going around like that. All right, check it out. Pretty good. So the name of the game today is this product here, Golden 900 Heat Set Fabric Painting Medium. Okay. Pretty much, I'm trying to convert my acrylic paint into fabric paint. It might be hard to tell, but I've made little yellow lines because I want them all to be even and little squares. They're just one inch. This is pretty fun. It's quite therapeutic, actually. I don't paint very often, but I am enjoying this. The top part is gonna go over your ear like that, and then the bottom is gonna go under your ear. So I'm just gonna measure where that fits for me. You want to open up your bias tape? Just slip one of the sandworm tails right up in there, fold that whole thing in half, and this is where you're gonna loop your ribbon or elastic. This is my inside out wig, and now we're gonna use it for an undead psycho. Perfect. Troubled by the living, is death the problem and not the solution? Unhappy with eternity? Call Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. There must be something bad Here I've got the top layer, the lining. Do right sides together, stitch the top and then stitch the bottom and that's it. And just before you top stitch, you wanna add your elastic, so just fold in those side seams. Now we're gonna be doing the skull makeup. I'm, oh my God, I just said makeup. I meant to paint the mask. <laughs> it feels like it's gonna be makeup because I'm gonna be doing it while it's on my face. My plan is to use some chalk and to take this tutorial, I was gonna watch a James Charles tutorial actually, but his is neon. That would have been cool, like a different skull like instead of black. Hmm. After much contemplation, I've decided that instead of like the black shading, I might do a pink like this, like a fuchsia magenta. Not that pink is revolutionary either, but then it's not so basic. <laughs> I think it's here actually. I've got my magenta all mixed up. I feel like this is gonna be one of those projects that has to get bad be before it gets good. I think the trick to this is to not make them perfect, but that's actually kind of hard for me. I'm not good at like making things look organic. And then once you've Carve that out, then you can go in and start shaping the tooth. You know, you add a little curve because teeth are not rectangles. As she said, they are chiclets, and I stand by that. So there must be some fancy way of blending these two, but I'm not sure what that is. So I'm just gonna use my finger. Starting to take shape. It's gonna be a constant like dip, dip. Like all my brushes now have all three colors. Just keep painting, just keep painting. Once you get to this point, it is so much fun. Oh, 
I'm feeling like James Charles over here. Ooh, see, it's kind of looking a little bit like flames. That's kind of cool. Here's some insider scoop of skeleton makeup. Okay. The reason why everyone's skeletons look a little bit different isn't because they designed it that way. It's because they were following a tutorial, most likely, and then things started going south. I hope this doesn't turn out looking like it's got gingivitis. So you started adding lines in random places and then you got something else. Cause that's sure as hell what I'm doing here. Don't feel bad if you don't follow the tutorial to the T. Gain inspiration and then just go to town with it. <laughs> I'm gonna use this little guy to hold up my mask. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. There must be something bad features. You'll find her beauty goes much deeper once you get to meet her. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I had so much fun finding looks to coordinate with the mask. And I hope you guys really try it out, like maybe a different colored skeleton, maybe a different film. I hope this kind of inspires you to try something new. And while we might not be celebrating Halloween like we usually do, or like we usually do, I still hope you can all get into the spirit of the month and have a fantastic October. I will see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!